Uh, we're looking this hour at the Arctic. It's one of the world's most extreme environments, a place that very few people actually get to see. And just now, scientists are starting to see the effects in a very major way of climate change. Temperatures are rising faster there than anywhere else on the planet. Let's talk to NBC's Peter Alexander. And Peter, I know you actually just got back from an extended stay there. Got, you got to see more of the Arctic than you had originally anticipated, That correct? we bargained for, but it was well worth it. We intended to go for 10 days. It turned into 23 because freezing rain kept us on this scientific ship longer than we expected. We traveled more than uh, 2,500 miles. In the course of the process, we did visit what is one of the world's extreme environments. It's a place that few scientists uh, even get the opportunity to go. It is essentially 8 million square miles on the top of the world, and for thousands of years, the frigid waters have been barricaded by ice, which has turned away explorers in certain of what is known as the Northwest Passage. That's a shipping shortcut between Europe and Asia. Recently, it has been unlocked, as you look at some of the video that we just brought back with us. This summer, the Northwest Passage set what is referred to as a chilling record. For only the second straight year in recorded history, the waters were ice-free. We traveled on board what is called the Amundsen. It's a Canadian Coast Guard icebreaker with a team of scientists researching climate change led by Arctic Net's Martin Fortier. And during this journey, we spotted polar bears, as you see in this video here, it's a wow. mom and their two cubs. Just one example of a species that is in danger. The disappearing ice sheets, of course, are threatening their ability to hunt and to survive. And interest in that region, Contessa, is also heating up. Geologists estimate that about 25% of the world's undiscovered oil and natural gas may be in the Arctic. Here's Martin Fortier. To open this up to navigation, we don't have proper regulations, we don't have proper safety measures, we don't have anti-pollution measures. We're just opening this to potential catastrophe. We're going to put up some uh, graphic right now. This is NASA animation. It shows just how quickly the Arctic ice cap is melting. Scientists say in the last two years alone, it has lost an area larger than the state of California. Contessa, we witnessed that as the, as the glaciers there are receding and the, and the summer sea ice just disappearing. Explain why scientists uh, are so concerned about that. Why does the ice shrinking matter so much? It, well, here's a good way to put it. Think of the Arctic as the Earth's ice uh, air conditioner. Okay, let's put up another graphic for you. This is um, a, a better way to understand it. Sea ice reflects the sun, okay, helping keep our planet cool. But as the ice shrinks, more of the heat is absorbed by the dark ocean, and then it's released back into the atmosphere, which ultimately melts more ice and that creates this harmful cycle. So the more that that sea ice disappears, the more sea ice will continue to disappear, creating more of a problem. So you're out on this boat with a bunch of scientists. What do they think that they can do about it? What are, what are they hoping to accomplish? Obviously, uh, this is change that's been occurring over the course of millennia that the Earth has existed. So they're only being able to look at it in a, in a small period of time. For only right. three decades, they've done this. Their ship, as we said, is the Amundsen. It's essentially a floating laboratory. And as you see some of the work that took place there, it was outfitted with high-tech scientific equipment like sonar machines that create a 3D roadmap of the Arctic's uh, ocean floor. Scientists sampling the waters collect and test animals for contamination, finding evidence that that was an ecosystem at risk. Mm -hmm. They explained to me that the contamination really starts at the bottom of the food chain and goes to the top, which is exactly where we are. So ultimately, what we're doing is affecting us as well. All right, Peter, thanks so much for coming in and sharing your story with us. Sure, thank you.